Really? <laughs> but, She's doing what? Okay, I wanted to talk about how much you should raise your prices by. Because a lot of people, when they go to raise Good their question. prices... question. I was just thinking about that. What? Okay. Okay. I should raise my prices. How much? How much? How much, though? I know. Well, we're touching on everything today. What up, girl bosses? What up, lash bosses? Alrighty. Today, we are diving into episode 11 of mm, My, my Lash, lash 2 Brain Cells. I'm your host, Maddie Morris. And, and I'm also your host, Elliot Morris. And <laughs> Equal host. <laughs> your equal also host in the exact same amount and way as Madison. <laughs> 50-50. 50-50. Straight down the middle. <laughs> I would actually say, like, you're more so the host. I would. You know, I would, too. I would, too. Probably 80-20. TBH, I think it's, like, I don't know, 60-40. Because, like, you do all the, like, because, honestly, I was thinking about this. I had a kind of a dream the other day, and I was like, okay, what if Elliot, like. Goodness gracious. Where is this going? What if Elliot wasn't here? <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a bad dream I had. And then I, in my dream, Elliot <laughs> disappeared. He died. He died. He, he died in my dream. Oh. Okay, I had a dream. You died. And Ow. in my dream, how did it happen? <laughs> how did it happen? I don't know. But in my in my fake dream, um, I was like it's trying to film the podcast, but I didn't know how to use the camera <laughs> and how to like turn the lights. And off. you're just crying the whole time because you're like, Elliot was so good at this. Yeah. So honestly, this podcast is a little sixty forty because like yeah, I get yeah. it. I'm the talent, but um, <laughs> we get it. I thought I was. The I'm talent. the content. Um, I thought the people watched for me. But y'all, I don't know how to turn on a camera. I literally don't. The microphones, everyone's always like, what microphone do you use? Girl, I don't know. It's black. I, we got it at Best Buy. It's a sure SM7B. A C- and we also bought them from B&H Photo, not Best Buy. Okay, but. well, I don't know that. Okay. No, if Madison I'm was- just, I'm just hyping you up. I'm just giving you credit. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> no, if Madison I'm was filming saying. this, this would be this would be how the podcast is set up. She would go, she would take her, her can of water and then she would set her <laughs> phone up on it. And then she would press record on her phone and then she would sit back and she'd be like, hello. And then I would upload it to YouTube. And you would upload it to Instagram Reels. Yeah, there'd probably be no audio. <laughs> there would be no audio. <laughs> okay. Well, today, you guys, um, I wanted to talk about something that I get questions on all of the time, in person, online, everything. Um, and what would that be? Everyone wants to know how to raise their prices. Everyone how wants to, to raise know. their crusty, dusty service menu. I mean, I get it. It's tired, girl. It's expired. It needs to be updated. It needs to get that money up. <laughs> it's Period. twenty. It's twenty twenty three, and everyone wants to know how to raise their prices. But here y'all at, heard of inflation? Yeah, everything's here going up. at my last two brain cells. We don't believe in just telling you you should raise your prices. We believe in giving you practical ways on how you can raise your prices, and if you're in a position to raise your prices. Oh my gosh, what a useful and immediately applicable episode. Yeah. We wow. We believe in giving you legitimate information that you can start using. Wow, our listeners are so blessed. <laughs> <laughs> um because i i hear from a lot of people like you should raise your prices but like okay, yeah, not but everyone should raise their prices th- also true like, also true if you're in the uk you should all raise your prices <laughs> that's true you all okay if you're in the uk you all need to get in like a group chat yeah and say okay everybody no, no, no. what are we doing I was just going to say this. Everyone's always going, because Lash Artists in the UK, if you're not familiar, Lash Artists in the UK charge like 40 pounds of fill. Like they charge absolutely nothing. And a lot of their work is like top tier. It's not their work. It's just like kind of the, that's just the Lash economy in the United yeah. Kingdom. And that's like what people are used to charging. And they're like, wow, like girls in America are charging 350 yeah. bucks for a full I could set. Never. And, and at like, first Madison was like, no, you should do it. And but, then girls are girls in the UK are like, no, you really No, it's you actually just understand. like how it is over there. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, no one's coming up with reasons how we should combat that. And I think I have the reason. I think you all get in a group chat. You unionize. <laughs> and you all pick a day and time where you just like say, we're all doing it. You all raise your prices day. that day and time. And then it's done. It's over with. It's over with. Like what are they gonna do? They can't leave all yet. I think you just discovered unionization. They can't. This is this is how this is how every union is formed. I learned what a and, union is yeah. today. Today on this episode of My Last Two Brain Cells, I'm Madison just, is going to learn about the Industrial Revolution. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I just invented the Industrial Revolution, honey. I just invented it for the UK lash artists. And right, everyone's going to get together, raise them at the same time, and, and we gonna- can call it a union. <laughs> Yeah. And you're going to say, listen, babes. Listen, babes. We're not charging enough. It's not 40 pounds anymore. <laughs> it's 60. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do now? Go to, go to Bonnie Sue down the street? No, you're not. She's charging 62. Okay. 
I think we just fixed the industry. <laughs> and I, while simultaneously alienating every UK listener we've ever had. No, I do their accent justice. I love my little UK accent. Yeah, true. No, no Mad- Madison's allowed to do it. It's not cultural appropriation because she lived in New Zealand. Yeah, so. no, I... <laughs> I I lived in New Zealand. You just have to do a Kiwi accent. You can't do a UK accent. Yeah, no, I'm allowed to speak in a British accent because I grew up with people that had kind of British, had British accents. Ac- kind of British accents? Yeah. Scottish doesn't count, Madison. No, um, <laughs> no, I grew up with people that had Kiwi accents, Australian accents, British accents, and like I just slip in and out of them. Oh, yeah. It's just sometimes I forget. I, I start eating out. a meat pie and I just, before I know it, I'm uh, speaking. Um, hello, babes. <laughs> hello, babes. <laughs> What are we getting today? Mega volume? All right. No, I'm dead serious. You guys all need to raise your prices. Pick a date and time. And then just like, I mean, worst that can happen is you just nuke all of your clientele. <laughs> worst thing that can happen is you like can't play re- pay rent on your flat. I mean. <laughs> just, I think that's, but I think that's the only option. Don't worry. The rest of the advice is better than this. Okay. Let's get into it. Raising your prices, honey buns. Okay, number one is should you raise your prices? Let's get that out of Maybe. the way. I think you should raise your prices this year if you have... If you're fully um, booked. Obviously, if you're fully if booked. If you're fully booked, easy, dub, yes. If you have a wait list or you're about to have a wait list, raise your prices. If you um, have elevated some aspect of your business, whether that be your skill or your education or your space, if you have gone from like home base to a suite or you have taken... Um, extra education like maybe your work looks vastly different than it did last year your attention's better than it used to be you're kind of your prices are kind of stuck in their ways and it's just time obviously raise your prices Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um number two um if if it is affecting you like um just inflation of like your rent your products like all this yeah if all your stuff is more expensive yeah defo defo raise your prices um number three anything you can think of okay what are some reasons that people shouldn't raise their prices um they shouldn't raise their prices just because like everyone else is doing it or they are just told to raise their prices if someone what is a business what is like a situation with their clientele that someone could be in where they should not raise their prices like if you're still building your books and your clientele is like still getting comfortable with like paying for lashes in general like you don't have like a high-end clientele built that's like comfortable tipping you like you know 30 40 bucks every time they're rebooking like you're booked solid you know you're kind of top of your area like if you're still building your business that's perfectly fine if your prices match where you're at perfectly fine good don't raise perfectly fine there was a time in my business where i made 30 percent of 35 dollar fills and like that reflected my skill set at the time it was probably a little low though it was a little low but it was a little low but it was still like it was still in the range of like what my skill set yeah it was understandable my work wasn't that good you weren't great no and like that's perfectly fine it's okay but if you're in that position all that means is there's room to grow work towards getting into the position where you can raise your prices invest in a training and that's that's one of the things is like if you're charging low prices you don't have a whole lot of money to invest into stuff but it's okay you can start small yeah start small like ask even even you can do it for free ask make friends with other lash artists who are in like neighboring areas and be like hey can you like give me a few pointers yeah who you, girls who you think are good be like hey i'm really trying to get better like mm-hmm. i know i suck like can you help me like improve this i think you do this really well the majority of girls are gonna be so so happy yeah especially to- if they're educators yeah. yeah um number four is and this is just very basic but you realize how expensive running a business actually is and it is necessary for your business to continue growing Ooh. that you make more per service because the only way to make more is having more customers or your cost per customer goes up and if you have just gotten into lashing chances are you have kind of just looked at like what everyone around you is charging or like what people have told you to charge but that might not be the price that you should be charging yep. and so if you have just like done your pricing based on like what people around you have and now you're maybe like six months a year and you're like okay well whoa maybe that wasn't where they should have been maybe i wasn't taking into account like my rent or my product or taxes or like my customer acquisition costs my marketing like any of that if that was just kind of a number you threw out maybe it's time to revamp so that's the reasons i think you should raise your prices i would go so far to say is if you set your prices based on what the other people in your area are charging they probably are too low yeah because there um, have been lots of studies on like the income that like small business owners get. And the majority of small businesses are barely staying afloat. Like you go down the street, you look at like the mom and pop pizza place, you look at the mom and pop coffee shop, you look at most lash artists, 
Like most people who are in small business are barely making enough to cover all their business expenses and then cover their living expenses. Most people are just like barely, barely making it worth it for them to stay in business. And cause that's what the market optimizes for people. Yeah. The easiest way to get more clients is to lower your prices. And so a lot of people, the, the majority will go towards lowering their prices to the point where it's barely makes sense. And then anyone who lowers them more than that, they go out of business, so they're not there anymore. So then the market will generally, the more efficient a market is, it'll stabilize right at where it's barely profitable enough for people to stay in business. And then there's like, it's it's like, what's the point then? If you're barely making enough to go yeah. stay in business, it's like you should be making enough for you to feel so happy about where your business is yeah. at. And it's- An unpopular opinion, your business should be profiting. Oh, I, I feel like that's not <laughs> that's not that one's not actually unpopular. Your business should be profiting. Obviously, we all know. No, but that. I mean, I'm amazed. Like a lot of my students, they they don't talk about like profit a lot. Yeah, they talk about top line. They they're like, oh well, I'm I'm taking these many clients. I'm I don't care this how much. much anyone makes in top line revenue. Nah, nah, it's all profit. That's all that matters. Like that is the only thing I care about in our business is what is the profit after expenses. We're that, talking about like financially. That is not the only reason. The only thing he cares about. Oh in business. yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously. If we're talking like obviously bigger picture, I'm talking if I'm looking at the financials of our business or any business, it should be profiting. 100%. If you're not profiting, absolutely. Your profit and prices, your yeah. profit margin, especially for like a service based business where yeah. you're, as like, as a lash artist, you are not only like the owner of the business, but you're also the employee in the business. And so you should be paying yourself a salary, quote unquote, as the employee. And then you should also be taking profit from the business as its owner. So you should be getting paid more than what you would be getting paid as like an employed lash artist because you are also the owner of this company. You're taking on the risk of owning a company. You shouldn't be doing it for like pennies. Like the way I think for most lash artists, like your expenses should be like 20% of what your uh, fills and full sets cost. Like mm -hmm. if you're doing a full set or let's say you're doing a fill because most people do more fills. If you're charging, let's for easy math, let's say it's a hundred dollars a fill. Your expenses on that fill should be twenty bucks, and that should include that portion of the rent for like that hour that you were in there. Like break your rent down yeah. for like what are you paying per client you take in a month in rent? Are you paying so like say you uh say you are doing um a hundred clients a month and your rent is a thousand bucks a month. So if you're doing thousand bucks a month, hundred clients a month, that means your rent per client is 10 bucks. Then how much are you paying in products per client? Well, then you're paying, you're paying are, X amount in taxes. Yeah, are you paying 10 bucks per, per client in, in product? Then you're at 20%. Generally taxes, I, I would put on top of that. Yeah. So like, um, 20% is your fixed and, uh, uh, relative expenses for doing the, providing the service and then from that 80 percent which a lot of people i think when they when they hear that they're like well 80 percent profit that's a lot it's really not because you take out of that 80 percent you take out taxes you take out all the other like little things that come along with running a business like licensing and like insurance. All, all those insurance like all that stuff comes out you need to be at least like when your client is out the door you need to have not paid more than like 20 percent of what you charge them in order for it to really make sense and if you're not at that point yet totally fine but you should be working towards where you can get there yeah and if you're not there you shouldn't be satisfied with where your where your prices are amen baby um that was a really good way of breaking it down tbh Aww, um thank you buddy of course um Next, I wanted to talk about how to do a price raise. A lot of my students ask how, like, how to physically. Okay, guys. How to physically communicate with your clients that, like, the price is no longer what okay. it is going to be. This is this is, this is is what everyone listening is thinking. It's like, okay, Elliot, Maddie, like, I get it. I should raise my prices. How the heck do I do that? How am I doing it? How am I doing it? What am I supposed to say? You don't understand. My clients are so nice. They are all going to hate me if I raise my prices. We are friends. They love me. But if I raise my prices, they will hate me and they will 
never talk to me again. Yeah, there's a there's a tactful way to do it. So what is that? The way that I've always done it in the past, um, that's been very effective. And every time I've done a big price raise, I've done like three in my whole career, but they've been they've been big. Like they've been big boys. I've never raised my prices by like ten dollars. Like I've always raised them by like fifty dollars, um, with the intention of like having a quarter of my clientele drop off. Um, so I've always done it when it was like extremely necessary for like me and the health of my business. Um, and the health of your back and your yeah, and bones my well-being. and your joints. <laughs> I know. Um, what was I going to say? So I personally don't recommend um, talking about it on your Instagram, especially if you're fully booked, because talking about it on Instagram, A, you have clients that are going to miss the memo. B, you have new clients that are going to see that and be like, oh, she's doing a price raise. New clients don't need to be in the loop at all because no, they're only, they don't need to know because they're only going to know you for your new prices. Yeah. So um, I don't recommend posting it on Instagram or online. I recommend giving yourself like um, 15 to 30 days, I think is um, is a good amount of time Mm -hmm. about 15 to 30 days i recommend printing out little flyers and what i've always done is at the end of the service that i have with my client like the last you know two minutes that we're um i'm checking them out and we're rebooking we're chatting we're getting caught up i just say oh by the way i have a few upcoming changes with my business i'm going to give you a little pamphlet to take home just read over it um like love you so much see you next time and then it cuts that conversation where it's Mm -hmm. awkward and where you have to be like hey so on November 16th, I'm doing a price raise. My fills are 80. They're going to be 90. You're looking at your toes the whole time. Yeah, like... it, it, it's very, very nerve wracking. Um, and no matter how cool you are with your client, it can be very uncomfortable. And what if they have questions? You just don't want to answer them. Um, I recommend just cutting out that middleman and giving them, uh, I mean, sorry, creating a middleman. And that middleman is that little flyer. You can print it on Vistaprint or whatever. And what I recommend having in that flyer is having um, like almost a little newsletter for your clients. Cause I always think of Brilliant. it as like giving them a little newsletter, you know, like updates newsletter. to Lightheart. And yep. the way I would always do it is I would say, um, you start the letter, start the letter with a little thank you note, a little bit of gratitude where you say, Hey, so-and-so, um, as you guys know, my business has grown so much in the last year, and I am so grateful for how many people I've been able to service, how much my business has been able to grow. And as you know, the number one thing that is important in my business is um, continuing my education and improving the, improving product for the you. quality of my work for you. Yep. And this year that has happened, I've been able to do X, Y, and Z. I've been able to, maybe it's move into a new space, or maybe it's I've been able to take continued mm-hmm. education, or I've you know streamlined my business mm-hmm. in X, Y, and Z way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, to make the quality of my service better for you. And also you want to kind of touch on how the service that you're currently giving is valued at this, not what you are going to bring. Mm-hmm. Right. I would just you, be, you talk about the things you have already done to make this a better and more valuable service for them. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, due to all these changes I've made in my business, uh, it's necessary that I do a price raise and, effective X. And a really good way to say it too, is in order to continue investing yeah. in my business like this. So First off, you start off with, okay, these are all the things that I have done to make this such a good deal for you and to Mm -hmm. make this so good and to make your life better. Mm -hmm. And I'm investing into this business so that you will get a better end service and And, that your lashes will be better. And to reflect that. And to reflect that. And also, here's the things I want to do in the future to invest further in my business, to further make it better. And in order to facilitate that, in order to be able to invest more into this business in the future, Remember, you started off with telling them the ways you already have invested, so the ways they're already getting boom, a good boom, deal. Boom, boom, boom. Then you say, in order to keep investing, in order to give you an even better deal in the future, I have to, I'm have i going to have to raise my prices to this much, and this is going to be what it is going forward. Yeah. Effective whenever. Um, yeah. And then I would just say- Give them, give them a, a reasonable notice. Yeah, give them a reasonable notice. Yeah. And then I would just say, you know, uh, I am so grateful for how my business has grown. Thank you so much for supporting in me and believing in me from the beginning. Um, if you have any comments or questions, uh, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and, and if they have any questions going forward, then you open up that conversation of like, then they can reach out. And, and um, if this, and also just leaving it open- if this doesn't work for you, I completely understand and I appreciate your business. Um, reach out to me and I will send you some incredible referrals of people that can take care of you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. then they know it's not personal. You know, they can reach out to you. You have referrals for them. They can. You're not for everybody. And if you can accommodate that budget that that person has, it, no hard feelings. You know, this is what is best for my business going forward. Yeah. Yeah. And another way that you can get creative with it, too, is you can say like at the bottom, at the end of it, you can say, if this price raise is going to affect you being able to pay for other 
necessities in your life, if this price raise is going to affect your ability to pay for rent or pay for food or like word it tactfully, but say, reach out to me and um, we can uh, I can work with you to figure something else out. And when they reach out to you, you can say, OK, these are what my prices are for for lashes, but maybe we could move you to a lash lift. That's going to take you a lot less time. Maybe yeah. if you offer lash lift, you can be like, hey. Maybe, maybe you retail magnetic strip lashes. Yeah, maybe you maybe retail you, magnetic strip lashes. Now there's amazing DIY lashes on exactly. the market that you can sell them. Like, so maybe, there's alternatives that where you can 100%. still service them. 100%. That is, like you don't lose them as a customer and you're able to still give them products. You're still able to get income from that's them. That's so smart, Elliot. I just, because like when I've done I'm price thinking. uses in the past, I have done that where people are like, oh my gosh, like I can't afford to like get my lashes done every two weeks by you anymore. You know, I've always been like, no worries, girl, girl, like I can refer you to somebody else. Or like if you're interested in like magnetic strip lashes, DIY lashes, a lash lift, if you, if you just want my recommendations for a freaking mascara, like Absolutely. I will do anything to like help you with your yeah. beauty goals. And if you retail that stuff and you're like, hey, retail uh, that stuff. And if like say like if you know like you know your clientele that's if smart. you know you want that, a lash lift babe yeah want a lash lift i could give you lash lifts it's, it's gonna be more affordable than getting lashes yeah or like if you know your clientele and you know like i'm doing a pretty substantial price wage i'm probably gonna lose quite a few start retailing like alternatives like yeah. think about it ahead of time be like okay let's find some really good strip lashes yeah. and then if someone reached out to me and they're like hey i i can't do this i can't afford it it's like okay i understand it's like it can be scary going to a new lash artist mm -hmm. like here are some strip lashes i personally like tried them i vetted them for you like they're safe they have lash like, artists your approved. lash their lash artist approved like here's some here's some like gro lash growth serum yeah they could use that instead get yeah. natural long lashes like there's so many other ways that you can like keep monetizing them as a client and one of the other really important things that um i think is a key part of that like last thing in your in your flyer mm -hmm. is like by saying like hey if this going is going to affect your ability to pay for other things you're going to have a low percentage of people that are going to actually take you up on that because a lot of them are going to read that and they're going to think okay well I, it is more expensive but like i'm i can still pay rent like yeah. it's i'm a 20 dollar price raise on their lashes there are some people who that is like you are. Because some people pay for lashes on their last time. Oh, yeah. Dime. This is their last time. But, I've been that girl. I was yeah. 15 getting my lashes done. But like. a lot of your clients, a lot of your clients, it's not their last time. And like, yeah, their last time. And yeah, but they would can, like you, to pay also, less. Also, you can never assume what somebody can afford. That is true. That you is true. never, ever. A lot of people like. Cause and raising some people your, are very irresponsible with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, but some people, you know, I think as lash artists, we're very compassionate people. And we sure. can we, we put ourselves in Which the shoes of others. Which is a good thing. It is a, a good thing to be. It is a be. good thing. But I think it's very emotional for us to do price raises, especially 100%. when we're like, oh, my gosh. Well, like, I know that they're in college or I know that, like, my clients, like, won't be able to afford, like. It, very important just in business you can never you never know what somebody can and cannot afford you True. never know by the purse True. they wear by the car they drive by the job they have you never ever True. know who like it's just not your business and you need to do what's in the best interest of your business and if somebody if it is in their they want and they are can pay for lashes they will get them it doesn't True. matter what that person you know what True. you what you think in your head what they can afford Madison still carries around a Target purse like 90% of the time. So do, girl. So, and she can afford lashes. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, probably, she could probably even afford to get like two sets of lashes a okay, week. Okay, stop. She's um, really, <laughs> but, she's doing what? Okay, I wanted to talk about how much you should raise your prices by. Because a lot of people, when they go to raise Good their question. prices. Good question. I was just thinking about that. What? Okay. Okay. I should raise my prices. How much? How much? How much though? I know. Well, we're touching on everything today. So um, a lot of people, when they go to raise their prices, they feel like the most safe option would to be to raise them as little as possible so nobody notices. But I recommend doing nah. your price raises as infrequently as humanly possible. Yep. Right? And as. Because it is unpleasant. It's even not fun. With all the tactics in the world, even if you do it in the best way possible, yeah. no one wants to do Guys, that. Guys, I raised my prices in November, and I wanted to throw up. She throw did. up. And obviously, I was like, none of my clients are going to leave. Like, they, my clients are. They, and none of them did. Addicts, and none of them did. But um, I was, like, throwing up, crying. Like, I was so afraid. And then I did it, and, like, nobody noticed no, at all. Well, it's not that they didn't notice. They just didn't care. Well, they didn't care. They didn't uh, care. Of course, they yours did. was a substantial price raise. You were raising it like what, 30, 40 bucks? I raised them for, uh, from one fifty to one eighty, and then one eighty to two ten. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, substantial. And substantial. my false, my false sets went up sixty bucks. Yeah, 
they went up to 350 yeah. and no no one cared but also it was it was the time for me to raise my prices you know true, if true, i had true. done it six months earlier you probably would have lost some if i had done it you know you know there was it was the perfect timing for me to do excited wait list a mile long um true. so for me it was the right time but how much should you raise them by? I recommend raising them infrequently. And when you do it, it should be like by at least at 20, like 20%. 20 yeah, yeah. 25%. Yeah. yeah. It should be substantial because if you're at a point where, as we talked about in point one, if you're at a point where you should raise your prices, mm -hmm. right? Um, it should be enough so that you can go until the next price raise. Yeah. Yeah. And also there's also ways that you can do it where it's like, it is from a marketing perspective, like, a better price point so like say you're at 80 bucks and you're like okay i should raise my prices by uh 20 percent is what i want to do like it is going to be easier to raise them to 95 than it is to raise them to 100 yeah like thinking about what those key price points are in like your customer's mind is yeah. like it is going to be important it's like that's like the reason that our uh like going independent when we or like Look at uh uh the Angel Lash course. Like we sell it for one forty nine instead of one fifty because there is a very real difference in the number of sales you'll get at one forty nine versus one fifty, and it does make more sense to sell something for those prices. That's why like you go to every store and everything's nine ninety nine. It's like okay, why do they do that? Everyone understands it's ten dollars, but it's like subconsciously in people's heads like even I'm though, like i'm getting a deal <laughs> even though you think about it and you're like okay it's ten dollars your like lizard brain is still like 9.99 <laughs> it is nine dollars it's cheaper it is nine dollars not... because there is a nine at the front exactly exactly it's like even like your clientele smart like even with smart people like it still works it works on everyone so yeah. it's like if you're raising your prices if you're about to break a hundred, break a hundred by like fifteen bucks. Go to one fifteen. Don't just stop at like a hundred. Or if you're like, okay, I need to stop around a hundred, go to ninety five. Uh oh, what is intern? <gasps> oh no. What happened? Our temp. Our it temp. got too hot. Okay, the there's gonna be no video for a moment. Oh, that's uh, fine. Please bear with us. We could just honestly finish the episode. Ellie, we could just there finish right? the episode. Yeah. Okay, we will finish. The episode in darkness. Pretty much everyone is listening on audio. It will be a moody, dark episode. Oh, the, finally I can for the last few take my bra off. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what are we? Do you want to wrap it up? Yeah, just to wrap it up. Um, to wrap it up. How much should they raise it by? 20, 25 percent. Yeah. Feel out your your clientele. Like you'll 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 know when it feels right. You'll know when it feels right. You'll know right, when baby. it feels right. If you're like. Yeah, this is good. It should be a little scary. Yeah. It should be a little scary. If you're like, oh, this price raise, I'm a little scared. If you're like, I'm going to raise my prices by $95. I'm going to go from 60 to 150 It's like, okay, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. It's like, make it reasonable, but make it a little bit more than what you would be super comfortable with. But if if, yeah. if you feel like I would be super comfortable raising my prices from 60 to $65, raise them from 60 to 72 Go a little, go a little higher. Sixty nine ninety nine. Sixty, sixty nine ninety nine. Nice. <laughs> Could be good. Could be and, a good price. And, and if you're watching this and you're like, you know, I'm at a position where, you know, I align with everything. Like I should be raising them. I understand why I need to raise them. It's the time I need to raise them, and I understand how to, I need to raise them. I know that you still feel nervous, and my advice is, for you is to go for it. Pick a date. Stick to it. Stick to your guns. You'll be grateful you did. It's the best interest of you and your business. Um, and you know your clientele will evolve as you do and your business and your clientele will evolve as you do. So um, all the best to you guys. We also, wish you also a lot of these tips came from a guide that we send out for oh, yeah. free to all of our email list subscribers. Oh, yeah. um, so if you would like a written guide on how to raise your prices and what to say in this thing, you want the notes oh, yeah. for jo this whole episode, email list. join the email list. So you won't email, get it right away. So You'll the email list, if you go to lightheartlash.com, a little pop-up will come up. Yeah, it'll be a little pop-up. And then just, It'll say get 30 days of free content. Yeah, First of all, you'll get 30 days of free content. Yeah, throw your email in there. We don't send you anything annoying, spammy, advertising. Nah. We only send you very, very valuable free guides that I make. So um, you'll get 30 well, days. And we, we also tell you about some of our products. Yeah, but we, we, give, we give you, like, cool discounts and stuff. Cool discounts and stuff uh, yeah. for being a, a cool cat. In the Cool Kids Club. Um, but, yeah, you'll get that email or you'll get the email with the price raise guide, like, after a week of being signed up. So sign up now. We send you good stuff, like, weekly. Yeah. No, we send lots of good stuff. We send the price raise guide, the 30 days content. There was something else that we yeah. also have on there. 
it's it's great lots oh of how uh branding shoots changed my business yeah that was one of them lots of good things there's so lots of good stuff join the email list you'll get that and um xoxo we love you guys to bits smooches smooches <laughs>